Good morning. All right, so we are going to uh, continue uh, where we left off on the on the a class we created the my string thingy to uh, kind of replace the 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 C strings. Um, I'm just gonna quickly go through what we have done down to this point. Uh, and uh, we're going to continue on that. So essentially, all the things that we've, when you look at the, <clears throat> when you want to look at what we need to cover for the first half of the semester, everything is done, OK? So we have everything covered. Now we're just going to continue using the same concepts of making that string better. So essentially, reviewing all the things that we have done. Uh, the only thing that is already implemented, and uh, I'm not going to redo it, is classes with resources that I'm going to put emphasis on, and we are going to talk about it a lot. So, <clears throat> let me... Um, To kind of demonstrate and uh, give a good example of how everything's supposed to be <clears throat> when we are creating a, uh, what I would call self-managed class that takes care of everything that it owns um, and it tries to simulate something else in the language. Um, you have to follow a certain type of, you need to have certain type of knowledge to do it. First of all, the very first thing that the class that we created, <clears throat> the feature that it had, it was a class with, we call it resource. That essentially a fancy way to saying that the class doesn't contain its data. The data is held somewhere else. It's exactly like you and your bank account. You and your bank account are two separate entities. You own the money in the bank. It's outside of the resource. It's not in your pocket, OK? Um, when you have $50 in your pocket and you go to a store, the $50 goes with you if, if you have it in your wallet. If you lose your wallet, the $50 is gone, not the money in the bank because it's outside of your scope. Same thing over here. So uh, my string holds the data, which is a, a C string outside of its territory. We don't, uh, when we, my string doesn't uh, keep track of the size of the data outside because a C string does it by definition. Uh, if it was an array of integers, if it was uh, an array of doubles, an array of anything, then we need, we need it to keep track of what is the size of the data that we are rolling outside. It's exactly as if you uh, always keep track of what is the balance of your money in the, in the bank. But because the definition of a C string in C language ends the data with a null, we'll just kept it that way. It's not the most quick and efficient way of holding data. So I could sacrifice uh, the, the space and add four bytes to this thing called size and kept track of what is the size of the string so if anybody wants to see what is the size, I return that value with no calculation because it's always updated. Or I ignore to do that. And anytime anybody wants to know what is the size of my string, I literally count the bytes, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and I go until I hit the null at the end. We chose to do that for simplicity. And later on, when we create an array of things, I'm going to do the exact same simulation with an array of uh, integers, for example, and we're going to do it in, in half an hour, probably the next day you're coming in. But we're, gonna, uh, we're not going to do that over here, so we don't have a size. So again, my string is a class with data outside of its territory. Because of that fact, it needs to get created in many different ways. That's why we have what we call constructors. Constructors are essentially procedures written that they hold the, the, the name of the class, which means the constructors are not functions. They are procedures that the 
uh, C language takes when my string comes to life and it asks you when you are bringing my string to life how do you want it to be as soon as it's born that's what we call constructors constructors can be in many different shapes like any function they are not functions but through signature of the arguments as we overload functions you can overload a constructor and we said a constructor that does not carry any type of value in it, we call it no argument or default constructor. That's essentially when you create the object with no information, you don't initialize it to anything. The other one that we have, we call a one argument constructor. And a one argument constructor is the one that is usually mistaken with the assignment operator. So at line 13 and 14 in the right hand side in prg.cpp, I am creating my name and assign it to one value. I'm not assigning it, I'm initializing it. Therefore, initialization at the moment of creation is a call to line 10 of my string.h, which is one argument constructor. So one argument constructor can either be called as uh, initialization at the moment of creation, or as we mentioned, it could get more uh, faces. I can have it with traditional one, this is like if you look at a C old, old C compiler, this is what we do, one argument constructor. So line number 13 and 14 are identical, or I can use the universal way of initialization using the curly bracket, which is uh, a newer way of doing the things. And you will see that especially those people who are uh, either uh, keep themselves updated or uh, they just started the language, they use number 15, okay? So 13, 14, 15 are all the same. Therefore, I can uh, comment the two over here. We don't want to see it. So that's uh, one argument constructor. When we are dealing with a two argument constructor, the story is a bit different. Two argument constructor, it, it's uh, the syntax of a two argument constructor is either 14 and 15, and it can't be any of those, any, anything other than that. So if I want to have this as like this, and then say I want maximum of five characters over here, this cannot be done. I have to actually uh, uh, either do it this way. or do parentheses. To invoke, and I'm not going to say call, to invoke a one argument constructor. And why my cout is giving me an error? Cout is ambiguous. Yeah, anyways, we'll find out. doesn't matter. So, so it could be any of these two, and they're both perfectly valid and OK. So. Uh, common that one. All right. So that's constructors. So we said constructors are like that, and you can have many different arguments passed to it and overload it any way you want based on the business logic. Then we talked about operator overlays. Have you seen, I packed number 13, 14, and 15 to talk about it last. I'm not going to talk about it now. So let's go to operator overloading. With operator overloading, we said it's nothing but a function that can be called in two different ways. Either the function format, which literally see what the name is and call it that way. So essentially, line number 17 is concatenating a C string into the current operator into the current uh, my string. And line number 19 is concatenating another my string to the current one. Simple and straightforward. And the assignment operator over here does the same thing. So sets the current object to the C string that is coming in. So operator overloads can be called in two different ways, either their operator face, which is uh, not here,
for a person who haven't been in class, the names of this uh, um, on these uh, the name on these uh, files don't make sense because uh, I, I'm calling it constructors. It has nothing to do with constructors. Kind of. Um, um, crazy to do that, but you know why I called it constructive it was because we were talking about constructive. So uh, was I, what I was saying was uh, if I have a my string name, and I want to add something to it, I can say name dot operator equal plus equal literally like that and I put over here jack whatever sometimes your brain goes goes blank and that's what happened just to me now right, okay so I so by doing something like this I'm adding whatever to that thing okay let me use my favorite names over here so Homer and I'm going to call this one J. Okay, so 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 now the name is Homer, and I concatenated J to it. I could simply invoke the exact same operator instead of operator name. I could actually use the operator version of it, saying name plus equals space, for example. So line number 13 and 14 are identical calls to... Line number 17. Are we good with that? Again, these are all reviews on what we have done. Okay? So line number 13 and 14 over here is essentially the, the identical calls to line number 17. Right? And now if I have over here something like my SDR surname, and I go like that, now I can say name either dot operator, operator plus equal, for example, surname, to concatenate the surname to the whole thing, or I can use the operator version for it again. They are identical, it does not make any difference. Are we okay with this? So these are member operators and they apply to everything. All the member operators that are binary as at line 17 that I see over here could uh, get reused if we actually design cascading for it. We do cascading by returning something that is useful for the next operation to happen. For example, I have full name over here, the plus equal operator of mine to be useful need to return something. In this case, it's a good idea to return a my string, right? So that's why I can get the result of the plus equal operator and pass it through to the next one. Now, in this case, it goes to the assignment operator. An assignment operator can pass it to something else, and that's the cascading effect. We did that with what we call the address of the current object, T-H-I-S. We called it this. So at any moment we want to return the address or the reference of the current object, either we return this or we return target of this. Remember, target of any pointer is essentially a reference. Target of any pointer is essentially a reference, no difference. Okay, so you can use the name of the object, you can create a reference to the object and use that reference. You can have a pointer to an object and get its target. All three are references. Therefore, I am returning the reference in the operator equal operation or plus equal operation that I have over here. Um, <clears throat> I'm returning the, the, the reference of the current object. And these are all passed out by reference. Why they are passed out by reference? Because in the code that we have, the object whose reference is returned is present. So plus equal operator with the name at line 18, plus equal operator with the name at line 18 is returning the reference of the name. So when it's returned, 
and the operation is over, name exists in the scope. Therefore, the reference can be returned. If I have a scenario in which when the operation is returning the value or object, the object is not present in, in the scope, I cannot return the reference anymore. I must return a copy of the current. All the operations that you see over here that are binary can be implemented as standalone functions, but that's against our religion. We don't want to do that. We are object-oriented people. Object-oriented people love to have everything as members unless they can. Okay? So when there is no way in any way to do member operators, we go to non-member. All these oper binary operators, they can get implemented as non-members except the assignment operator. Assignment operator must be a member. You cannot overload the assignment operator without having it as a member. When you think about it, assignment operator's job is to set something. How can you not have an object to set it to? You know what I mean? It doesn't make sense. To adding to plus equal to do stuff like that, it makes sense to have it as a member because you have two things and you want to do stuff with them because the operation is not hardly predefined. Assignment to operator is always setting an object, so it should be a member. Okay? Therefore, you cannot have an assignment operator as a non-member. We're going to see how the number non-members work. But as I was mentioning as at line 21, as I'm creating a binary operator that does not have a side effect, which means the left operand, like line 15 of erg.cpd right-hand side, the, like that one, this one changes the name. So after the operation is done, it changes the name. So let's uh, save this over here. Binary with side effect. Oops, it went back to what it was before. So yeah, as I was mentioning over here, um, line 21 acts differently, which means I have something like this. And I have my, and I want to be able to say full name is set to name plus that, plus uh, surname, something like this. Let me see if we didn't do this. No, we didn't implement this yet. Okay, so let's change it. We will, that's okay. So I want to I want to write something like this. <clears throat> so in this scenario, the plus operator over here is a binary operator, but name and surname, they are not changed. So what do we do? Uh, in this case, because they are not changed, I cannot return the reference of any of these because none of them are the full name. None of, the, are, none of them are concatenation result of name, name and surname going back into full name. That's why when you look at line 35 over here, when plus is, no, not 35, uh, line, 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 where is it? Oh, at line 30, no, th 31 is, oh, wait. Yes, 21, yeah. So at line 21, thank you very much. So at line 21, the MySDR that is returned over here does not return a reference, so it has to make a copy and and, re and return it out. Return it out. And returning a copy was a bad thing. Why? Because we found out that when you copy something that has resources within, that copy might cause trouble. We said, I'm going to go through it very quickly. We said that 
bad copying is when you have one class with data and you have a second class with data and you copy it and when you copy the system only copies the class not the data outside and therefore both classes point to the same place and when the destructor is called it deletes one of them taking the data away and the second one remains with a pointer pointing to nowhere and when the destructor of that one is called it is destroyed because of this fact we do not like copying an assignment to happen automatically by the system if our class has resources outside of its scope classes with resource okay for that we have to apply rule of three and we said rule of three is to implement two one specific uh, constructor which is a one argument constructor receiving the object of the same type essentially copying the the object and the second one is an assignment operator that receives the object of the same type we call the first one the copy constructor the concepts are the same it's not that we are teaching anything new you already are doing dynamic memory allocation with functions and uh, same no difference right but the difference is that you must implement these constructor and uh, this constructor and this operator overload for your class to be safe to be used if it has resources in its uh, outside of its territory. So this is called copy constructor. This is called copy assignment. And obviously, destructor. So for any class with resources outside of its, its territory, rule of three applies you must implement these three to have a safe thing running without with no memory leak no questions asked any class that holds the data and this can be handled in some other way you can prevent the object to being copied say if i create this class this class should never get copied nobody's allowed to copy it you can do that so you can handle the copy constructor by saying equal to delete which means anybody try to copy this the compiler will stop it I still handled it but by preventing it the same thing for the assignment operator when this obviously destructor you can't do destructor must exist always okay because it has to get destroyed <clears throat> but if you do not want it to be assigned to anything you're going to say my strategy to keep the rule of three and make sure everything is safe is to prevent its copying and assignment instead of handling it something like c out c out should not get be assigned to another c out it's not it's not supposed to happen c out is not supposed to get copied because i mean i stream is not supposed to get copied is not supposed to get assigned because of that everything in there is private or deleted as we call it. In old versions of C++, if you look at the old versions of C++, when equal to delete was not implemented, the way to do this was to create empty copy constructor and copy assignment and put it in a private section of the class. Therefore, the, cons the copy constructor and the copy assignment was not accessible to outsiders, therefore no copy. But now we can actually say equal to delete. Are we good? Another thing that I wanted to say, so this equal to delete, if we want to prevent it, we do not want to. So So these are if we want to prevent it. Uh, but we are not to we are actually implementing it so I'm gonna leave it like this for it to work another thing with the default constructor we know that we can initialize the data over here right in this example that we have done we manually took care of that data which means we went to the initialization area the place that I said you cannot google it it's the the, the term that I'm calling it so in the in the space between the close parentheses of the constructor's implementation and open curly bracket, you can initialize everything of a class. We mentioned that, right? And through that, we initialize the data. But in new C++, in old ones, you had to do it this way. 
In new C++, you can actually initialize it right in the class's uh, description, which means instead of having those, I could simply do this, and that makes it null, right? So therefore, this is not necessary anymore, because when it's created, it's going to uh, get uh, set. And the same thing as this one, I don't need to set this to null. The same thing over here, and same thing over here in this one. I don't need to. So as you see, the constructors need to set m data to null is eliminated. Because in any case, when it's created, m data will be not null at birth. Are we, do we understand this? Now take a look at your const, uh, default constructor. What is it doing? Nothing. So why we are writing it? Let's not just implement it. Problem is that if I do that, if I just remove it, the rule, it, the rule in C++ is that when you create a constructor, you are responsible for all of them. And we want a default constructor. But the default constructor is not doing anything. If that's the case, you can just tell to the compiler, please, although I created other constructors, still create the default constructor for me. That's done like this. So you're telling to the compiler, hey, I created other constructors, I know, but please create the default for me. I don't want to waste my time writing stuff. And that's what happens. And why we can do that? Because we initialized our data there. Okay, no matter how it's created, the data will be null. So we are good. All right? Okay, and I expect everybody, actually, uh, uh, let me just pause it. <clears throat> so, <clears throat> now, now that we have uh, our constructors and everything in order, uh, we need to um, take a look at cases that we have operators that are not returning references. Now we can implement them. Without rule of three, returning non-reference material means copy construction. So there are two things that guarantees copy construction happens. Three, one is obvious, is when you creating an object, setting it to an object of the same type. That's a no-brainer, okay? You, you, you just, you're just literally copying it. The other one, passing values by, passing objects by value to functions. If you recall how I told you how the functions are called, they are essentially copying. So you are copying the value, so that's copy constructor. Another thing that we are not aware of is returning values, returning things by value. Anything that is returned by value needs to get copied. Imagine there is a force field over here, and I want to give my cup to Ashton over here. And the force field doesn't let this thing pass. This is not allowed to go from here to there because it evaporates. It belongs to me. He cannot have it. But I want to give the coffee to him. The only way is to create a disposable cup, put the coffee in here, give it to him. He's going to get the disposable cup, empty it in his own cup, and throw the disposable cup away. That's the only way I can return something from one function to another because their scopes are separate. Because of that fact, any time you are returning anything, even an integer, a single character, a hospital, whatever your object is, when you are returning it by value, it has to create a temporary object. Put the value in it so it can destroy the old one. And then pass the temporary object to you. You get the temporary object, put it wherever you want, and as soon as that line is over, that temporary object dies. That's how it is. Now, compiler, because there are lots of copying happening over here, compiler, new compilers now recycle. They're saying, okay, you are asking me to make a copy of this and then kill the copy and then to get another copy. I'm, I'm going to 
remove that one killing halfway through, and I'm gonna reuse and recycle this. So it tries to reduce the number of copying, but copying is there nevertheless. It's going to be there, okay? So returning object by value is extremely important thing. You have to be careful about it. All right. Yeah, that's right. Anyways, so, <clears throat> Yes, we did that. So now when we are doing plus operate, plus equal operator in any case, that's why the implementation of it becomes like this. When I have the plus equal, the plus operator that is a member, first of all, I have to make sure that the right-hand side opera, uh, operand that is coming in is not touched. I have to make sure that the left-hand side that is the open is not touched. Therefore, left and right are both untouched, which means no side effect. Now I have to create the result, and what do I do? I create an object copying the current object, the left-hand operator doing whatever is needed, returning the result. And <clears throat> although it is supposed to be two objects created, which means a result and then return, when you walk through it, you see it kind of uh, jumps out of order. First this calls, then return comes, and this one calls. So essentially, what the compiler does for you is this. So you write this code, compiler writes this. Because now it's smarter than before. You follow what happened? Compiler calls this one. Compiler says, now this is where I said you never call a constructor. I'm not calling a constructor. I'm creating a temporary nameless object out of the current object. Then I'm concatenating the right operator to that nameless and return it. Therefore, there is no need for a local thing. Compiler understands that when you have three lines of code over here and just does that for you. That's why when you are walking through with F10 in Visual Studio, you see it comes in a first line that jumps to return then comes back up. That's the reason, because compiler does this for you. It doesn't create a local variable. It creates a nameless and returns it. And the outcome is the same. So it's not really a review. I kind of add little things to it as I go through it. Pardon me? It's not calling, it's creating a temporary nameless object. So when you think about it, take a look at the syntax. If I say A, it means I'm creating a variable called A out of my string, correct? If you remove the name, you're still creating, but it's a nameless one, okay? So what I'm saying is that when I say my string A, A, B, C, I am creating one, my string called A, correct? Remove the A, everything is still happening. You are creating a my string. It just doesn't have a name. And because it doesn't have a name, it dies at line 49.5. So if you run this program, it works perfectly you'll see something get dynamic memory and all the stuff are, are created. And as soon as this is over, the destructor is called and it dies. That's, that's one of the things that um, other profs teach, and I respect them. They are very good programmers. But I don't like it. I do not like, I do not like reusing other constructors like this. I do not like reusing other constructors like this. For example, uh, you see, uh, because I didn't design it that way, I cannot give you an example of it. But assume that this, the, the two constructors that I have over here, I'm using yellow copy, right? Imagine if I did this.
and then shorten it. You can do that, right? You are creating an endless set, so you are reusing the other, you are not calling a constructor anymore. You are creating a nameless one, setting this one to that one. What is the expense of this? You are creating an object. Dynamic memory is happening. Assignment operator is being called. Reallocation is happening. Everything is done. This is dead. Alloc the, alloc the memory allocation is over. Comes back. You know how much overhead you have over there? Just create a freaking function and call that one instead. You follow what I'm saying? So <clears throat> although I see these things happening, but I don't like it. So it doesn't make sense to me. OK? <clears throat> yes. Or you just want to demonstrate that no, no. How, how, do you, how do you understand if you are returning by reference or value? That it is I'll give you the answer in two seconds. It's very simple and straightforward. Okay? <clears throat> I want, I'm trying to come up with a, a real life answer for that. If I'm standing outside of a corridor and I'm supposed to teach you C++, right? If I come through the door, Farda's still coming to the door, right? And I'm coming over here and I'm teaching you, right? So no copying is happening. Farda's reference is coming in. I'm the same person outside, correct? Plus imagine, imagine that I'm outside, but I'm not allowed to come to this room. Then what do I have to do? I have to ask my colleague, transfer all my information to that colleague and tell to the colleague, go to my class and teach my class. The person who comes in over here represents Fardad as a substitute teacher, but it's not me. That's when a copy is coming in. So you have to look at your logic. If the class you are returning is not allowed to exist outside of that scope, you have to return a copy. There is no other way. The object you are returning exists out there. You don't need to remove it from memory, then return a reference. Let's look at the examples. First, let me remove this. In here, I'm doing plus equal, correct? The plus equal in the program happens like this. So I'm talking about line number 15. So on line number 15, ah. OK, at line number 15, Function 26 is called, correct? Right? Who is the left-hand side operator over here? The left-hand side operand here. It's name, correct? So when you are returning this, who you are returning? Name. Does name exist in this? You can return the reference. Now let's come to here. If I can find it. That's the one. Oh, yeah. So there you go. So now in here, you have a plus operator between this and that. What are you returning? Are you returning name? No. Are you returning surname? No. What are you returning? A MySDR. Does the MySDR exist in here? No. Because it doesn't exist, you must return a new thing out. You cannot return a reference. It doesn't exist here. Therefore, you have to return uh, a non-reference. Does that make sense? 
All right. Okay. You know why I learned this for the first time? Took him my own advice. Like I remember literally 30 something years ago when I was actually doing this. Um, I, I literally told you to turn your intelligence to off and walk through. If you do that, if you don't expect magic to happen, and turn your intelligence to off, be a computer, dumb as a doorknob, then walk through. Then you'll face the problem. The problem is that when you use your intelligence, you expect intelligent things happen. Like, I don't know, some object comes out of thin air and you're going to use it. Poof, magic. Because of that, you make a mistake. Always when you are walking through your application, you are debugging your application completely. It's a very difficult uh, skill that suddenly blank your mind as if you didn't write the code and walk it through as a computer, and then everything's going to be crystal clear. All right, so that's that. Now we know how those things work. We talked about operator minus minus over here when we said if I want to, if I want to reduce the, the length by uh, one from left side, uh, I'll use the prefix operator overload. And we said prefix operator overloads because there are only one argument that they're always members. They are not. You can make this one a non-member too. You can do that. Don't. Okay. So you can do all. Ev any, everything can come out and become uh, like if you want to. But well, we'll see. We'll come to it soon. So that's that's. Uh, we said that f uh, for this type of scenarios, uh, you are dealing with it normally as you want to do. And and for this one, as you see, I'm returning a reference because that what is being returned is actually the 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 uh, So when you actually write something like temp is equal to minus minus name, we said if we do something like this, because the name itself is returned, I'm going to, and it has a side effect, so I'm going to re remove the first character of name and return it temp becomes the, so in this case, it's going to be ome, okay? So uh, the H, oh, why did I call it Y? Anybody? Omer. Okay, seriously, I called it Y all the way through. <laughs> I know what they say there. Anyway. Yeah, so so it was so in here, when I'm actually dealing with it, I'm still creating a temporary. So this thing needs copy construction because I need to have a copy to do whatever I want to do. But this is a very crude way of doing it. I'm doing it awfully. Okay? Usually in stuff like this, you don't need to reallocate memory. You just shift everything to left, and you make the null termination one back. Who cares? Well, we have one extra memory over there. Nobody's going to, you know what I mean? It's, it, it still works. So you can do stuff like that in C style. But this is the object-oriented version of it. So you are essentially saying create a, a temporary out of the other one, one further in the, the thing, create a copy, and reassign the copy and return it, which is fine. And we said that when you are doing postfix one in here, uh, I mentioned to you that the postfix operator, if I do something like this, oh, minus, minus. So, so essentially temp, temp becomes home, correct? But that doesn't happen in integers, does it? In integers, name becomes home, temp is still homer because minus minus is happening after the name. Remember that? Remember that doesn't carry it around. Again, turn your intelligence to off. You are overloading the minus minus, which means the old minus minus doesn't exist anymore. You are giving it a new meaning, which means this is not going to work that way, sadly. So. Um, what do I do? Okay. 
So now, Homer came back, Homer, okay? So now if I have my SDR temp is set to name, oh, no, 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 temp, and temp set to name minus minus, Now, what's happening over here, where is it? There you go. So I'm setting it like this, and I'm returning the reference. So if I see out name and temp over here, so if I go see out name and see out temp, well, we'll see that the name and temp that are getting printed three years later are both Homer. We don't want that. We want it to act like regular plus plus that happens after. How do I do that? We can't fake it. All we can do is, so my objective is, my objective is to my objective is I'm trying to reuse my, my, my functionalities to do this. My objective is to keep temp what name is before minus minus, correct? If that's the case, then I cannot return name anymore. What I need to do over here is this. Take that out. Take that out. And then after taking it out, I have to say uh, my SDR old is equal to this and return the old one. See what happened? So I did everything that I was supposed to do. But what I did, I made a copy of stuff before the operation, and I returned the old one. OK, now if you do it, did the, I think they're both, I think it, it didn't work, did it? Homer remained Homer, right? So we have a bug here somewhere. Oh, it's a space after Homer, you're right. Thank you for observation. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, so so we do this now. Now it actually works. You see? So it's an illusion. But I did it using copy constructor and returning something that doesn't exist here anymore. Because name that I wanted to return the reference now is changed. I cannot return its reference. I have to return its previous version that I made a copy of before doing all the operation. Do we understand this? That's how the magic of minus minus and stuff uh, happens. Uh, overload the plus plus, that's two seconds, okay, to do add a space after. Do that yourself. We talked about member operators. We talked about member operators uh, a binary, binary, uh, uh, so let me just put over here. Binary post and pre. So we talked about not being able to perform a procedure, not being able to make a, a member operator overload. When that happens, there are two possibilities. Number one, when the left side is not an object, so we said, if I write over here,
and I write over here my str h is set to Homer plus name. If I have something, or although that works too, but I just wanted to have it separate. I don't want it to be initialization. So if I have something like this, because the left one is not an object, it's a primitive value, this plus operator cannot be a member of that. This is when our hands are tied. We have to make what we call a helper function. Helper functions, you see I'm doing the helper functions. They are all operator overloads. It could be a regular function if you wanted to. It doesn't have to be uh, a, a, an operator overload. I'm calling any function. Any function that, the, that, can, th that what it actually deals with is not uh, uh, an object that cannot hold a member, we need to create uh, um, We need to create non-member objects, uh, non-member uh, operators, which we did. Operator plus over here. The left side receives a, a constant. The right side receives a my string, and I create the result. So it's pretty straightforward and easy. But the only thing is that this is not part of the thing, and what you are returning is not a reference. And another case is when you actually have a class that is already implemented and you have no access to its code, or you're not allowed to change it. See out. I cannot go hack the C++ compiler, take iStream, and add an extra form, uh, extra member variable to get my freaking my string over there. I can't do that. It's my thing. It's not a C++ thing, right? For that, because I don't have access to iStream class, again, my hands are tight, therefore, um, uh, non-member uh, insertion operator as you see over here, okay? So, and remember, as I told you, this is standard, okay? This is standard. Uh, when you are overloading the uh, uh, insertion operator, you create print, write, whatever you have, a member variable that does that, and a member uh, operator, a member function that does that, and you make the O stream go through it. And then you call that function in here, and it's identical when you are doing reading. So if I want to do reading, it happens the exact same way. I actually created the read over here, but I didn't overload it. So I have the read. Where is the read? So read receives an, a delimiter like this, as you see, and it passes O stream through it and gets the dynamic string. So if I want it to be done with C in, all I need to do is exactly the same thing that I have done over here. So it's I stream instead of O stream. It's extraction operator instead of insertion operator. And it is I stream again, ISDR. The difference is that my string cannot be constant because I'm reading into it. Of course, it's not going to be constant. So that's going to be the class you are, that's going to be the function you are creating. And <clears throat> we create that function. We use, we reuse exactly what we had. So we essentially saying return str.read. Obviously, our read has a delimiter of new line and receives i stream. So if you are doing Extraction operator, it is always new line. But if you want to manually do it, you can always call read. So now I can actually ask somebody to enter your name before I do anything. I can actually say over here, name, and I can go. And go see in. H, something like that. Okay, I, I wouldn't do it the way I did, to stop at new line. I wouldn't do that. I would write a code for it to stop at white space, because we oh, stopping at white space is uh, what the extraction operator does with seeing when you are reading a string. If you write it like this, you are not overloading it properly. The person who's doing it will assume if you say Homer 
space j space simpson there are going to be three variables required for it but this one goes up to backslash n bad design okay so what i would suggest <clears throat> what i was the change i would suggest for this that you can go and do it this is bad design so i'm going to say over here bad design design because it does not behave like uh, uh, original operator and CN. Okay? Um, what I would suggest is to go into utils, and in utils we had get dynamic string somewhere, right? That receives a delimiter. Instead of instead of a character delimiter, create this. So create a character create this that receives a string. So you can put series of stuff that can be delimiters. And when you are getting it, do the get line and check the next one. That, so it's not going to be as easy with this one. You have to actually check the next character. So you have to do everything manually. You can't do it like this anymore. So you have, and good luck. Actually, if you write that thing for me, I'll, I'll give you some bonus marks. Okay, to actually dynamically get something with many different types of delimiters, okay? You have to do the reading manually yourself, character by character, and check and resize and do all the good stuff. It's possible. It's not difficult. Um, but it's, it, it's, it is difficult, but not impossible. Let's put it that <clears throat> For our knowledge. Okay. So, yeah, I would design like that. Then I could actually decide what type of a delimiter I have. If I have three different types of delimiter, I can add them all. Okay. If you design this, it would be nice. Design, not the zing. Okay. <clears throat> All right. So that's that one. But again, uh, we are just we're working here, and so we'll see what happens. <clears throat> All right. Uh, any questions down to this point? So what else this thing lack that we can actually add to it? Things that are not, re oh, we, we didn't talk about, oh, we didn't talk about these two. Okay. Uh, another thing that we want to review on is casting operation overload. Okay. Casting operation overload is when the compiler requires to change the type of your object temporarily to something else, as it does for everything. Uh, you can always overwrite that and overload it. The cast operator overload signature is operator and what you want it to be casted to. It doesn't have a return type because it is its own return type. When you are casting it, when you are saying the cast of constant character pointer should be this, it means it returns a constant character pointer. When I say cast of size t is going to be this, so on and so forth. So <clears throat> that's that. For operator index over here, we created, uh, so, um, and the coding for it is obviously, uh, it's, uh, it's not a, like a mystery. Let's just bring that in. I know everybody's getting tired. I told you uh, I have to go out early in these uh, mornings, bring your coffee. I did that. And luckily, I cannot fall asleep because I'm walking around talking, but anyway. Uh, we have, uh, uh, don't worry, we have like 25 more minutes and we're gone. 20, yeah, something like that, 27. Uh, um, <clears throat> so the implementation is pretty straightforward. So you write the operator overload exactly as you mentioned, and you return the required data. So for example, constant character pointer, I'm returning M data. M data is not constant, therefore automatically 
it will be casted to a constant character pointer. I don't need to actually write C will do it for me. If it's size T, then it's a little more difficult because size T is not always SDR len. If I am null, my size is still zero. So null or no data, they're both zero. So in here, I have to return uh, depending on what is M data. If it's not null, it's SDR len. If it is, it is zero. And that becomes what I have. <clears throat> and remember with conditional operation, with conditional operator, uh, the, the both types that you are returning must be identical. If not, you're going to get an error. You cannot mm, return two things that are not of the same type because it's the, 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 the implementation of it is not like an if statement. It actually has to do something, so these two must be <clears throat> of the same type. <clears throat> For the index operator, when I want to actually deal with this as an index and go through this, I created this one, which uh, essentially returns the reference of M data with a size T, which always loops on itself. I wouldn't do something like this. I would say if somebody wants to go further in the string, I need to give them more space. I need to add to the size. I think that's a better thing to do. So instead of, because like this, if somebody uses my operator, <clears throat> to go more than size and wants to set the next variables and keep going, then uh, if I return them back, I didn't accomplish anything new in my string. My string doesn't resize. You need to know what is its size to work with it. The whole purpose of creating is, is to treat it like a regular variable. When you create a variable, you have a long integer or a, or a I don't know, you have an integer, you are adding numbers to it, you're not going to check to see what the size is before you add it. It gets the size. So for this one, what I would do <clears throat> is actually write something to resize it when it's needed. And that's a pretty straightforward. So I'm going to write over here, I'm not ever going to say void, so I'm going to say this. Uh, <laughs> my SDR reference, and I'm going to say resize. Resize, how do I resize? I'm going to put new size, that's all. So I'm going to say size T. So <clears throat> size T resizes it. And I'm going to write it in a way so I can shrink and enlarge it if I want to. So I can reuse it later on for something else. That goes back to a review of dynamic memory allocation. So to create, to do resize, <clears throat> resizing memory, what we need to do is this. To resize memory, I have a, a data of some kind that is pointing to a piece of memory. I don't need to care about size because I'm dealing with string. It's null terminated. If it was an array of integers, I needed to keep track of the size too. So to resize, what I need to do is to first allocate the new size that I have. I cannot reuse the old one. It has to change. So first I create a temporary pointer of the same type and get what is the size is. It could be bigger or it could be smaller. It doesn't matter, but it has to be new size. Then what I need to do <clears throat> is to copy everything from the old one to the new one. Obviously, if it's smaller, I'm going to go by the size of the, the new one. If it's bigger, I'm going to go with the size of the old one. And I'm just going to do the copying. So that's that. And then after that is done, I can delete the old one and update the address of the old one to point to the new one. And therefore, I'm going to have a resized memory. Are we okay with this? You okay? Resizing <clears throat> a string is a little bit difficult. Oh, you'll see. I can resize the memory. There's no problem with that in two seconds. But actually setting the values is tricky. 
So, <clears throat> and this is, the reason I'm doing this is now you know what dynamic memory allocation is, you know mm, what constructors are, destructors are, and now we need to kind of get seasoned and understand how things work. So I'm giving you an example that I actually haven't done this, I think, uh, or if I've done it, I forgot. So I'm, I'm going to make a boo-boo, and gonna, it's going to have memory leak or some problem. You need to fix it probably. Uh, the resizing I've done 50 million times. I'm talking about the next step. But <clears throat> so how do I resize? I do the exact same thing as I mentioned. So I'm going to simply say, because it's a character, I'm going to character pointer, uh, sorry, a character pointer temp, uh, or let's call it like this, new mem. Okay, so that's new memory, and it's going to be character new size And uh, my thinking over here is that should I do plus one? I think I should do plus one because it's string. If it was an array, I wouldn't do plus one because I have size. But here I know any size I want. I need one more to go through. I don't know if it's a good idea to do that, actually. I'm just doing it. We may change it. So <clears throat> new size plus one. I'm doing that, and now that I have the new one created, uh, I have to do a copy. I cannot do a string copy here, because string copy copies to, I can do strn copy and go to the size that is smaller. Let's do that. So I have to go ut.str, do I have an strn copy? No, I don't. Uh, so I'm going to do it manually. I can't go to implement that, but we're going to go. So I don't want, it's going to go out of the scope, so I'm not going to do that. So I'm going to say size t uh, uh, i, okay? I'm going to say for i set to 0, i less than new size, 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 and i less than uh, ut dot str len of m data okay and obviously and and i'll tell you it's going to go complicated this is what i this is what i was mentioning so <clears throat> in here i'm saying each one of them but the problem is that this sdr len may be faulty the reason is that uh, the reason that strn is faulty is that strn of m data it could be null, right? Oh, wait a minute. I took care of that already. So instead of actually doing that, I can either, I can simply say this. Because it is comparing uh, size t to this, it's going to cast this automatically to size t. I took care of everything in size t to give what the length is. If you want to be specific about it so people don't get confused, you are kind to do this. saying, hey, I'm just going through the length. So whichever. So I'm going to say start from zero. Each one of them comes first. Stop at that time. <clears throat> and then what do you do over here? And in here, you're saying uh, uh, the, uh, uh, the new memories. I will be set to M data's I. So what I did right now was This step. I copied everything from the old data to the new one, whatever the size is. <clears throat> so that's good. Now the next thing I need to do, <clears throat> I need to make the next one zero. Okay? So which means after the copying is done, I need to set the other one to zero. So in here, I'm going to say new mem i set to zero. Correct? So I created new memory. I copied everything from the old one to new one. If, ever, if there was any, it would get copied. If not, the very first one will be null. Okay? So whatever the size is, it's going to concatenate that one. It's going to set it to that one. <clears throat> so 
the problem over here is that the problem over here is that with a string I cannot just set the next one to null. If the new size that I have is 50, that many spaces must be added afterwards, right? Think about it for a second. You cannot just, just think about it for a second. If I have, if I have, now, now this is the part that we're going to go bananas. So this is the old size that I have, and this is the new size that I want to have. When I copy this one over here, if it was regular thing, I could null terminate over here, correct? But if I null terminate, I did not resize anything. I have to actually add spaces because in string, expanding means filling with spaces, right? So I have to fill it with spaces and then make the last one zero over here. So I cannot set the, that one to null for null termination. What I need to do over here is to continue the loop. and keep going until I hit the end of it, okay? And then set that one, but this is, the, why, why did I do this? I could just say new mem, uh, new size is equal to zero, right? <laughs> Obviously, this is gonna be new size when it comes out. Why did I do that? To be able to set it to spaces. So <clears throat> instead of doing that, I'm gonna go uh, new mem, I set to space. Now it is okay. So new size, if it's smaller, this is not going to happen. Everything's okay. That's the null termination is going to go the same. If it's bigger, it's going to fill the rest with spaces. Again, dynamic memory allocation is a crazy thing. Depending on your business logic, you have to make it different. When we create an array of doubles dynamic, you'll see that this is a breeze. For this one, I have to go bananas. So now resizing is happening. So now I can resize. So <clears throat> what I can do over here in my operator equal, in, my, in, in this, I can say if index is <clears throat> greater than or equal to uh, size t of this, then what do I do? Resize to index. And in here, I do not need to mention anything, I'll simply say index, right? See what happened? <clears throat> now, if somebody, if, if the length of my array is 10 and somebody goes 15, it says, okay, 15 is greater than the size that I have. Resize it to 15, 15 plus one. That resize will copy everything and add spaces afterwards and then put a zero at the end. Therefore, my string goes big. So you can have five over there and set the 50th and suddenly you're going to have 50 things over there. Happen. I don't know if it's going to work though. <laughs> okay, so we're going to try. <clears throat> Boring class, I know, I'm sorry. I'm not giving you new information. It's just, so, and this one is going to be a binary non-member. Now, I'm going to try this, so I'm going to say <clears throat> name is Fred. Now, I'm going to say name 20 is A, is X. Now, I'm going to say C out name. And again, as I told you, Oh, 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 oh. I, I'm doing it in the wrong file. Copy before I save it. No, don't save. <clears throat> As I told you, 99% it's going to fail because I just wrote something and it came with the logic. I have no idea how it works. First, I'm going to run it, see if it works. Then I'm going to walk through it, okay? So <clears throat> let's control F5 it, fingers crossed. Errors. <laughs> oh, return my return of value. 
Sorry. There is no x. So something is wrong. <laughs> OK. So, and I don't know if it, did it give me that bad thingy? No, it says 0. Huh. OK, let's walk through. So when you walk through, you don't do 20, OK? I'm going to put over here name. Uh, Fred is F-R-E-D. I'm going to go 6. I don't want to go like 50 of them. Uh, I'm going to go 6 and see what happens. <clears throat> Oh, so let's go F10. <clears throat> we know the construction works. This is fine. And I have Fred over there. Thank you very much. Let's go to the index operator. So it comes to index. In here it says index is 6. Size of this is, what is size of this? Anybody knows? So it is resizing. So it's resizing to 6 now. OK? So we come up to 6. <clears throat> it's going to allocate 7. And it's going to say go up to 6 or that one. So 1, 2, 3, 4, and comes out. So mem is now Fred with lots of garbage after, right? Now it's going to say start from new si up to new size. Keep going like that. So it goes 1, 2. Yes, so now this is. Fred with few spaces and garbage. And as soon as I do that, I have Fred with few spaces. Down to this point, everything looks good. So let's get out. What the heck then? And now it's returning M data that is. Oh, I think I know. <laughs> I think I know. Let me just check and see if we, where is my resize? <clears throat> Can anybody tell me what's missing here? <laughs> I didn't do anything in here. I just copied new mem. I didn't delete the old one. I was so happy that I, <laughs> I have to delete the old one. I have to reset to the new address. I didn't do any of that. See, that's what I'm saying. Like, where do you find the logic and you're okay with it? You forget about the rest. I did the copy and I was happy. Now I have to delete the temp. No, no, not the temp, the M data. And then I have to say M data is set to new mem. Now I'm uh, now, I, <laughs> now I'm done. Okay, so let's try it now, see what happens. Control F5. Oh, actually, stop. So you see, uh, I use my intelligence. <laughs> so I did it like I did this, and I'm like, yay! And I forgot to do this and that and all the rest of the stuff that I'm supposed to do. And and the you know what's the sad part? I wrote the slides. <laughs> okay, so so don't be hard on yourself when you make a boo-boo like that. Let's try it one more time, see if it's going to work or it's gonna die on us. Oh, I have two 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 twos after, so there's something wrong, which means my null termination didn't go well. So it's <clears throat> zero, one, two, three, four, five, six. So I think I'm making mistake with size. Okay? So when I when index goes equal, I need to resize plus one, maybe? Because this is not terminating. And that's, that's where you need pen and paper. Now, I use my memory, and I'm trying to, uh, actually, you know what? This has a bug. Fix it. OK? Let's do it. Let's all of us, I, I, I can go through it and fix it now. I don't want to. It's a good thing for you to practice. So take this and, and see why is it not working? Why is it, why is it not null terminated? I believe that I'm going one extra, OK? And I'm not supposed to. What, what, anyways, check it out. Make sure everything is good. And then um, uh, next day we are coming, we're going to fix it. So this has a bug. <clears throat> uh, yeah, this has a bug. And let me just uh, try something else over here. I'm going to say. Uh, before doing anything, I want to see if it works for the regular thing. So if for uh, size 
t i set to zero i less than uh, size t of name and i plus plus I'm gonna go name i Okay. So I'm going to do this first to make sure that it's working with before thing. So Fred is working. It's going by the size. Uh, and uh, but the other one doesn't work. So <clears throat> I'm going to say this has a bug. You know what I found out about a bug? You know that bug came from? They say it's a bug. Who knows? Software testing. No, it's not software testing. It's an, it was an actual bug. You know, they had punch cards. Anybody knows what is a punch card? You know what a punch card is? How old are you? <laughs> I, know, I, I, at the first year of my, at the first year of my studies in I think 87 in university, I had first term, I had four turn on punch cards. So it's like cards like this, and it's like 74 characters on it. And those 70, 74 bytes, so each card was 74 bytes, and you had to type it, and it would punch us holes in it, and that was one line of your program, 74 characters. You put all this cause stack together, you give it to the computer, computer would go through it, look it through holes, and try to find out what character is what. <clears throat> there was actually a bug stuck to one of the punch cards, and when it was going through it, it got crunched in it, and that covered the lines, and the computer couldn't read it. So they, and after that, they called it debugging, so make sure there are no bugs <laughs> in your punch, and it stayed from there. It was interesting. Actually, I, <clears throat> um, my wife told me about it. I'm like, really? Uh, All right, so, so fix it, and then what we're going to do, oh, another thing that I have to mention, we still need the other one, the other one that we created. It's a good idea to have that, <clears throat> but have it like this, people. Take a look. It is still good to have the other one, but for the other one, create this. What for? In case somebody passes a constant reference of our string to another function, index can still be accessible, but read only. So if it is read write, this is going to get called. If the object is passed by a constant reference, this will be called. And because it's not changing, <clears throat> we can put the old thing that we had for it, which is essentially return. return, what was it, uh, m data, something like that, and did we do that? No, what did we do? Anyway, remembers? Uh, no, we just go m data, <clears throat> and then index mod size t of, of this. So if they get a read-only version of it because I can't change it, then I'm going to loop through it. So, uh, and for that, they have to check the size before they're using it. If the size is zero, they're not supposed to use it. So, um, and they cannot, so if it's constant, they can't use it. And if it's not constant, we'll do the resize thingy that has a bug, okay? So this has a bug, fix it. So that didn't have a bug. In this, I have to say this might have a bug. Maybe that might have a bug. This definitely has a bug. Where is it? OK, so this has a bug, definitely, because it's not working. So uh, that's that. <clears throat> Let me see what else we need to talk about. 
anybody, any questions? Anything? So today, as you see, it was just a review on everything that we have done since the beginning of time. Um, now, that print string over there that we have, uh, like if I bring this one up and I make it a constant, you'll see the other one's going to get called. So if I have another, so if I have something like this, and bring this one up, you will see that the other one is called. So if I do something like this, and I'll go over here, print str, and I'll put over here name, because the first one is passed as a constant reference, When the operator is called, it goes to the constant one. You see that? It doesn't go to the other one. And that's, and that's the end of the thing for today. Any questions? Suggestions? Should I put some price for fixing that? Oh. <laughs> huh? Huh? Are you trying to fix it right now? No, I don't want to fix it. No, price. It means if you fix it, I'll give you some bonus marks for something. Oh, <laughs> no, no. Well, anyway, so uh, let me just put it in. Stop it. I'm going to uh, post the recording later, so uh, let's stop.